Alright, greetings. Welcome once again. This is Emuna Yisrael Solonomics 101. You know, every so often, alright, I get a little turned up. So this might be one of those moments. Everyone, oh, let me, let me rephrase that. Most black people are not qualified to talk about the transatlantic slave trade. I know. You're probably getting turned up right now. Like, Amuna, I can't believe you said that. That was rude. Blah, 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 blah. Here's why I say that. Over the years, myself included, we just repeat rhetoric. We repeat these, these blaring generalizations about slavery and the transatlantic slave trade, not taking any time to really go into the matter. It, it, it is so vast. It is so extensive that to try to broad brush it, it's a great injustice to our foreparents and our ancestors who came before us. So where do these, or most, black people get their understanding of slavery? It's not in school. Guess where it is? Let me just read you something. First of all, let me start off with a statistic. According to the Office of Minority Health, 74 hours a week are spent by black people watching television. 44 hours a month are spent on the internet. This is according to their statistics. 48% of black people say they need to be up with the latest thing on TV. So the most reference that black people are getting from about slavery is from popular media. Yeah. It's from Roots, Amistad. Uh, it's from this new one that's coming out. So I bet you when this movie Underground come out now, everybody's going to be an underground slavery expert. I just want to say that the people who are doing these movies, they have to do research. That this stuff is not totally accurate. You know, recently as I started more and more studying um, about it, this is one of the books I wanted to read from, by the way. You want you want them to start, maybe it may be too much for you to go too deep, and you want some real life people who actually said some stuff that you can really quote, check this book out. It's called Weevils in the Wee, over 300 plus interviews of ex-slaves out of Virginia. So it's a good start so that you can get an understanding that it was not a homogenous institution, number one. There were so many different countries, European oppressors represented, that you cannot say every one of them had the same temperament. Take the time to do just a little bit more research past the Roots movie. And when we begin to do these things, we can substantiate what we're saying and be more specific. What if they said, all black people look alike? You'd be like, that's not true. But what we're saying is, all slavery looks alike. That's not true. As a matter of fact, some of your foreparents beg to differ. And another thing, not only um, house Negroes wanted to stay on, there's many testimonies about after the war, Field Negroes didn't want to go anywhere. Some of them said they never got a hit in their life. Some of them said, why would they leave master? So it wasn't only about the house Negro and the field Negro. This also is another, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, man. I don't know what to call it. All I say is just stop. Let's educate ourselves. So I'm going to do a little bit of sharing of what I'm doing. I'm going to do a working example of what I'm talking about so that we can change our mindset about slavery and actually put the energy and time into not only trying to make other people feel like, you know, you shouldn't talk about it or you should know what you're talking about, but that we within ourselves should find some place in there to heal from what happened. Because what happened to Matthew? Master John family may not have happened to yours. There were people who lived in plantations within miles of each other. And depending on your master, that would depend on how you experienced slavery. Now, let's get, not get it twisted. Everyone was enslaved. But then again, no. Amuna, that's not even correct because everybody wasn't enslaved. You had free people. They weren't enslaved, but guess what? They still rented time, as they called it. They still rented themselves out or hired themselves out to Europeans so that they could make money. And guess what? Guess how the slaves oftentimes in different places, I can't say generally, but in some of the accounts, guess how they looked at their free brothers? They were hating on them. There were laws not to talk to people who were free. So it's not only just, anyway, let, enough of Amuna talking. Let's go ahead. I told you this is one of the times when I'm a little turned up because I'm kind of tired of hearing about it. And, 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 and just now this next movie is going to come out or this miniseries and it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, you know, all of the non-slave experts. And we do have some out there. We have people who this is their life work, but 
we're not hearing them. It's not my life work. I just, I just really started. Like I've always been interested. So along the way, by the way, the Library of Congress recorded the voices in the '30s of people who were free or alive during the time of the Civil War. That's something that you can listen to. You know what really got me turned up is when I went to go listen to some slave narratives. And they were in lever box recordings. If you don't know what that is, check that out. And it was Europeans reading it. With no feeling and no empathy. That got me like, you know what? Enough. I'm going to do something about it. And by the way, Harriet Jacobs was a house slave. And instead of being a house slave, she was never beaten. She was never quote unquote abused, but she was sexually harassed. And instead of being a house slave, she decided to run away. And the opportunity for her to get to the north didn't present itself for seven years. And so she lived in the attic for seven years until her muscles atrophied and her eyes dimmed. So the thought or the illusion that because you are a house slave, your life was better is not a historically accurate. They lived, there another house slave in that same story, incidents in the life of a slave girl who happened to be one of her relatives. She was a house slave to Mrs. Flint and Mrs. Flint made her sleep on the floor through cold like a dog curled up at the bottom of her feet. Yeah? And she lost six children because the children were premature because the woman could not get any rest because day and night she was at the beck and call. So for those who say or keep subscribing to this erroneous doctrine that the house slaves were better off than the field slaves, the woman in the book said she would rather be a field slave so that she can be out of the reach. So again, some field slaves may have had certain experiences. Some house slaves may have had certain experiences. Let's give them a human attribute and not try to make everybody's experience the same. And let's also please take some time to get into this information that there is a wealth. When I say wealth, it's so much, just pick a spot. 400 years cannot be wiped over in one statement. Pick a spot. You want to go into the early slave history? We need some scholars there. You want to go into the height of antebellum slavery? We need some scholars there. You want to go into Caribbean slavery? We need some scholars there. Come on. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm turned up. Hold on. <sighs> okay. I'm back. I'm going to give you some real life people here. You ready? So that we can have some uh, information of which to go by. This is some real life people. As it related to, this is one of the reasons why we, the generations, two, three generations later, don't really know a lot about it. Even not in the books. is because our foreparents wanted to forget. They wanted to forget oftentimes this horrific um, institution. And instead of passing on the knowledge that we could remember, they chose not to speak about it. And so the remnants are still here today. This is one of our ancestors, Priscilla Jonia. My bad, Joan Neer. When asked about slavery, okay, she said she was born in Nash County, North Carolina, January 19th, 1858. She never saw my real father, she said. He left, I learned later, on the day I was born. My mother was Ann Lisa Joan Neer, wife of Rick's Joan Neer. I don't like to talk about it to folks, referencing slavery. She apologized, but I don't mind telling it for the work you are doing if it will do any good to have my life in a book. You can use it. It'll be gone pretty soon, or I'll be gone pretty soon anyway, and it doesn't matter anyhow. So this was a woman who was born into slavery, free during the Civil War after, and when they went on this journey through Virginia to get the narratives because they knew it was going to be valuable. Many of them said, why you want to write about me? Because all their life they were told you were nothing. You're nothing more than a slave. You, you don't have a narrative. You don't have a story. And some of them actually began to believe it. Another reference that you can actually look up on page 273 of Weevils in the Wheat, Elizabeth Sparks. Elizabeth Sparks, like they say, say her name. You say Sandra Bland, say her name. Tamir Rice, say her name. Michael Brown, say his name. Elizabeth Sparks, say her name. 1841. The interview was done January 13th, 1937. Come in, boys. Sure, I'm glad to see you. 
You're looking so well. She's talking to the interviewers. That's what I say. Fight, boys. Hold them. You're doing all right. I mean, I so mean nothing can hurt me. What's that? You want me to tell you about slavery days? Well, I can tell you, but I ain't. Oh, it's all past now. So I say, let her rest. It's too awful to tell anyway. You're too young to know all that talk anyway. Well, I'll tell you something to put in your book, but I ain't gonna tell you the worst. So basically, Miss Elizabeth Sparks said, I don't really want to talk about this because that's bad times. That's worse times. And if she had children and she didn't pass on this information, then her story died with her. But they went and captured this information and she did go on to tell them a lot of things. But she said, I'm not going to tell you the worst. But I beg to differ, she began to open up as the interview went on. And I'm going to continue to read this. We're about to read a story coming up. Um, the next story we're going to read is 30 Years a Slave by Lewis Hughes. And we actually have one of his grandchildren, J.C. Hughes, who's going to be his great-great-grandchild removed, many times removed, um, who's going to be on this conversation, reading the narrative. And this is how he actually found out that this was one of his family members, not from his parents uh, necessarily because they didn't know the fullness of the story or his grandmother. He found out by reading and researching and understanding that his grandparent left this on record for him not to have some abstract view of slavery so if we really want to talk about slavery if we really want to qualify ourselves in having this discussion let's put in the work so that we can when I'm sharing this with you I'm you don't have to believe like reading rainbow what's coming out of my mouth only you can go and substantiate for yourself and different experience may bring out something different than you that would allow your journey to be better so Please thank you for, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Bearing with me as I was turned up a little bit today. Uh, I guess it's just a spot for me where at this time in 2016, there is no excuse. Let me just say one thing. There are sites online that are categorizing this information, digitalizing this information, that at the click of a button, if you have no money and I'm broke, I can't afford books, there is no excuse. Because at the click of a button, these narratives will appear before you. And you can push your hand into the past and bring back the voices of your foreparents. And let them be heard from the mountaintop so that we can understand what it is that we still seem to be confused about. So, I'm going to just come off my soapbox right about now. Thank you for bearing with me. My name is Amuna Yisrael, by the way are doing the left project lift every voice reading the narratives of the slaves we have been doing so enslaved people not the slaves and not only the enslaved people our foreparents our ancestors but also those who enslaved them very interesting conversation um, once again my name is Amuni Israel thank you for joining us once